Welcome back to VA Creative and part 55 of the Ultima RS build. And on this episode, we're going to be fitting the high performance exhaust system. Yes, welcome back to the Dean Den and another all day pass. And on this episode, as I alluded to, we're going to be in the engine bay of the RS again. And what I need to do is do a prefit of the high performance exhaust system so we can complete all the routing of the wiring and also the hoses to make sure it's not near any headers, etc. So all there's left to do is uh, let's go over and look at that amazing exhaust system. So here you go. This is what a high performance exhaust system looks like from Ultima. Now don't worry, I'm not going to unwrap all these in front of the camera, you'll fall asleep. But what I wanted to do is just show you the complexity of all these components. And what I'll do is I'll just unwrap one or two parts so you can see exactly the quality of these items. Now, as you can see down here, Ultima provide, of course, all the bolts, all the brackets, all the clamps, all the gaskets, and of course, exhaust assembly paste, which goes on a couple of the joints, which I'll show you later. They also provide high performance exhaust gaskets. These are really nice Felpro. They're metal in the middle and then they have a slight give on them to ensure you don't get any exhaust blows. Now this exhaust for the LS systems comes in mild steel. Now for me personally, I prefer mild steel exhaust over stainless steel. And why? It's all about the noise. There is something about a mild steel exhaust that's less tinny, that's deeper, that's more throatier, and actually suits a V8 more. But that's my personal opinion anyway. Now, an option I went for was ceramic coat on all these items. I'll unwrap one and show you in a moment what it looks like. Now, the idea of ceramic coat, there's multiple reasons. One, it reduces the amount of heat radiated into the engine bay, which clearly we don't want. Secondly, what it does is it ensures the exhaust gases are hotter, therefore they're less dense, therefore they flow faster, and therefore you scavenge the cylinders more efficiently, which means more power. And there you have it. So let me just unwrap one of these items to show you what it looks like. Let me just get it. Now, as we can see here, as I unwrap this, look at the finish on that. That's the four into one collector, beautifully welded. There, that's the hole for the oxygen sensor. And what a lovely bit of kit that is. Now this shine, this silver, will retain over time. And I tell you what, when these are in the engine bay, they're gonna look amazing. So we have here pinch bolts, stainless steel, of course, so they don't rust, with spring washers, just a nice bit of kit. Anyway, the other item I want to show you is this. If you think you've got a big exhaust outlet, look at this baby. Just look at it. And there's two of them. And these poke out the back of the RS and flames come out the back. Maybe not flames. But anyway, these are just beautiful. And boy, oh boy, I can't wait until I fit this. Right, so the next thing for me to do is as I said in the intro, I want to just temporarily fit the headers so I know where to actually route all the wires to ensure they don't get too near those heat sources. So, let's get on with it. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break, you're riding shotgun. I'm wide awake, take me away now Cause I, I won't go down the same old path again now No, I, been running out of air so let me catch my breath Feeling I've got's making me crazy If I'm having a good time, don't 
Don't you blame me Yeah, this feeling I've got's making me crazy Making me crazy So I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive You'll see in that previous scene, what I've done is I've fitted the coil packs on to the top mounted coil brackets and also put on the spark plug leads. And I must say, they look pretty awesome. MSD, quality, 8.5 millimeter. And also what I did is to ensure this just stays pristine. All these fastening bolts, I've swapped out the mild steel that came with that kit and I've put in stainless steel. So what I'm going to do next is remove this protective tape, which stops any debris getting into the cylinders. Take off those spark plug leads, and then we're going to pop on the header. Now the header is in two parts. I'm not going to bother putting on the gasket just yet. I just want to sort of tighten them up gently so then I can root all that wiring. So let's get on with it. All these bolts are provided by Ultima. So what I'm going to do now is just connect up the headers. It's lovely. Everything just lines up perfectly. Look at that. Just finger tight. Looking good, I like this. There you go. And the next one. Nice beveled washers. Whoops. There you go. And that's all I want to do. I just want to put those on just very loosely. So now I can see what my clearance is for all the wires. Wow. 
welcome to the Dean Den inspection pit. No, you don't need one of these to build an Ultima, but I've got one which just makes life a bit easier because I don't have to jack the car up. I can just go underneath it and I'll bring you down here in a minute. Now, the reason I've got one, an inspection pit that is, is the Dean Den was my father's garage for over 50 years because he used to sell petrol, do MOTs, all that sort of thing. And this was an inspection pit he had dug by someone in the pub. So I'll just get some lighting down here and then you can join me and we can have a look under the car and see how things are going to be rooted. Come on, rookie, park that thing. Ten feet. Fit. Talk back is Barbara Paul. Go ahead and retract. Houston, we have hard dog. Okay, welcome to the underside of my car. Sorry it's a bit echoey, but we are in the inspection pit. Now, just get these wires out of the way. Now what I'm going to be doing first is wiring up the starter motor, so... Unplug that. Now, what you can't see is this little spade connector goes on here, and then behind there is a 13 millimeter bolt which takes both this and this. Now, I believe this should go over the top. Uh, there is the header there. Yeah, I think that should go over the top of that chassis rail. Right, excuse my arms. There we go. There we go. All connections made to the starter motor. Now what we're doing is just making sure all the loom is secure. I'm using a couple of zip ties here and any excess loom I'm actually coiling back on itself. And there you go, you can see I'm pulling it taut. And now everything that side of the engine is secure. Now we're gonna pop over to the alternator and an additional water temp sender. Now what you can't see behind my hand is an additional loom which basically goes to the alternator, the main wire of which I'm just putting onto a post with a nut there, and I'm tightening it up with a spanner. Now what I'm going to do now is rather than use zip ties here, I'm actually going to use P-clips and attach it to the chassis like I've done on the rest of the car. Now, again, what I'm doing is I'm making sure everything is done properly, even though it's under the car and no one's going to see it. I'm making sure all the P-clips are equidistant. You can see me there. And then what I'll do is I'll get my angled electric drill out and drill 3.2 millimeter holes. I can't remember if I'm using safety glasses or not, but if I'm not, don't follow my advice. Always wear safety glasses when you're working upside down. Now 
now it's time to drill. My right angle DeWalt drill, I love my drill. It's so useful. A definite must buy if you're building an Ultima. <laughs> I'm just looking at my concentration there. Yeah, I'm concentrating. Last hole. And now, remove the masking tape, and now I'm just positioning those P-clips with my trusty electric rivet gun. Yes, yeah, made me laugh. I forgot to mute my skybox. <laughs> See if you can guess what the film was. Got it, yeah? Anyway, on goes the second P-clip. And then the final one, just there. All done. Now what we're going to do is we need to add an additional water temp sender. There's already one on the engine and that feeds the engine loom, but this is for the analog instrument from Ultima. So there's already a threaded hole here. There's a blanking plug, which I'm removing. And then Ultima supply the sender matched with the gauge. And there it goes in there. Off camera, I did check the depth, so I'd always do that when I'm going into a blind hole. There is a, a copper washer there to make sure that it's going to be watertight. And it's very close to the exhaust header there, but there is just enough clearance. So we're going back over the other side of the engine now. Now what I'm doing here, this is the feed to the air conditioning compressor. It's just two connectors here, very simple to do. So you just connect them up and then make sure it's rooted nice and tidy and secured with the zip ties. That's done. Now, if you can remember one of my previous episodes, I didn't know which one of these was a positive on the fuel pump, but clearly I can see underneath, so that's why I'm putting these on now. I've added boots to make sure road debris doesn't get on the connections. Now, you see what I've done here. I've removed the headers. Um, so I'm going to put them on permanently in a moment. Um, also the plug leads because this main engine loom here, this needs covering in heat reflective material. And I've purchased this heat reflective material with Velcro on the back. And this is going to shroud this main loom from the heat from the headers. So let me just get in there. It's a bit tricky trying not to get in front of the camera. It's a good workout for the old back, this. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it. There you go. There's a threaded bolt hole there. And I'm going to put a little tab across there to keep that. In place. And here we have it, the exhaust system all unwrapped. Tailpipes, silencer boxes, catalytic converters, collectors, and then also the manifolds. And with all the fixings that I went through earlier. Also, we can see here there's a laser cut stainless steel bracket which actually goes on the back of the chassis 
and supports these two silencer boxes. Now, I'm gonna fit all this. I'm not gonna be putting this exhaust paste on just yet because I want to assemble everything to make sure it fits perfectly. So let's get over to the car and let's take each element in turn and install this beautiful bit of kit. Okay, so the header's on this side. I'm gonna keep it loose because what I'm gonna do now is fit the collector. And because these are two separate items, it's probably best just to have a little bit of play in it. Just gonna nip it up a tiny bit. They're not tight at all. So this is gonna be a bit tight. I've loosened off all the bolts. So let's just see how easy this is or isn't. Well, even getting it in is a bit of a challenge. <laughs> I, think, I think I needed to put that in before I tighten those up. Okay, right. You live and learn. <laughs> you guys are lucky because you can watch me doing this <laughs> to avoid having to do the same yourself. That's why you don't do it up tight. There we go. Whew. It's like a little workout, this. There we go. Right, so that fits quite nicely in there. There you go. Right, so I'm gonna just tighten these up just a little bit. What we see here there's a little indent there and there is a little indent on that flange so it goes on like that. Pop on the gasket. Now the reason I'm putting the gaskets on is I just want to allow for their thickness when positioning everything. I'm just going to pop the nuts on finger tight. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. You're riding shotgun. The feeling will change. I'm wide awake. Now on goes. The silencer. Now I'm going to have to space this up a little bit. So I've just loosely put this back stainless steel bracket on and you can see these are bolted to this back chassis member. There's rubber bobbins to isolate the exhaust and that fits superbly. 
that lines up just there like that. I'm going to clamp that so it doesn't move. And there we have it, exhaust system pre-installed and doesn't it look good? Okay, there's a few things I've got to do which will have to wait till next week. For example, tying down this rear bracket, nipping up all those gasket flanges, and of course, adding exhaust paste to some of the push fit parts. But anyway, it was pretty enjoyable putting this thing together with the only real challenge being how to thread that bunch of snakes through the chassis. But now, if you're building an Ultima, you can look and follow my lead. So anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you for tuning in. And this is going to be a great 2024 with the engine start just around the corner. So as ever, keep smiling and enjoy your spannering. Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning, morning